All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Audacity tutorial. I'm Josh Meyer of joshmeyervo.com. I'm a professional voice talent. I got into that through writing music. I've done over 3,000 paid voiceovers and counting, and I just so happen to be an expert in Audacity. So today, we're going to have a nice short video about compression, how to use it, and how it can benefit you. As usual, I will leave links in the description below for free EQs that I've created. Um, we'll have a male EQ and some female EQs. These are EQs that I created, um, you know, just as, you know, a general, general way of speaking, just knowing, you know, certain trouble areas for men and women that I see time and time again. So, you know, hopefully they work great for you. If not, and you're curious about getting a custom EQ, feel free to reach out. And as always, shout out to my students who are just killing it. I have been crazy busy helping so many people, up and coming voice talent, setting up home studios, performance training, all the way to finding work outside of the hamster wheel that is the pay to play website. So, Stick around, like, subscribe. I definitely have much more valuable content coming to you. And it really is such a pleasure serving you all. So without further ado, it's been a couple months since I posted a video. But if you guys think that I would leave you hanging, think again, okay? Uh, I've got a lot more valuable content coming. So stick around, like, subscribe. Let's talk about compression. What compression is, is it deals with the dynamic range. So we have soft parts of a voiceover or a vocal in a song um, or even for music, quiet parts, louder parts. And what compression will do is it will try to make the quiet parts more loud and compress the louder parts, thus making it, um, making it more congruent in sound, okay? And I'm going to create an example for you a really dynamic range. So please forgive me. I will be, uh, <laughs> I will be starting off quiet and then I may get loud at the end. Just, just, you know, if I blow you away, my apologies. So there's your fair warning. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replicate soft to medium to loud, and then we're going to go into compression and I'm going to show you how you can work this thing to your benefit. So I'm going to start off super quiet. I'm going to start off super quiet. Now I'm moving up to more of a medium range. Medium range right here. And now we're going to get really loud. Really, really loud. And I think I got so loud that I actually, you know, made the mic clip, but whatever. Um, you get the idea. Anyhow, I typically wouldn't do that, but this is, a, this is good for the example. So let's talk about the compressor. Okay, so let me pull the compressor up here. All right, so we have the threshold. What the threshold is, is it's saying, okay, where would you like us to set a filter, right? So that anything currently right here that is above negative 15 dBs will then be affected by the, the compressor. And it will be compressed at a two to one ratio right here. So that means like every two dBs above, you know, it'll be compressed down to one. So how do we know though? where to set the threshold. Now, for voiceover, you know, typically it's a pretty congruent sound wave. However, there are some pretty dynamic reads out there that may start off sounding a bit sad, a bit quiet, and then the mood changes and things become happy and a lot more fun. But in that case, we could certainly have a, a dynamic read where we have very small sound waves and much larger sound waves. So what I'm going to do here is teach you how you can use the, the threshold and the ratio to your benefit. Now, with voiceover, we're not going to need to compress a whole lot. So the ratio, you know, really shouldn't be, really shouldn't be high. You know, I think a two to one ratio is just a really solid, solid place. You know, if you're just looking for kind of a one size fits all type deal for your voiceover. But nonetheless, I'll teach you how to use this stuff to use it to your benefit. Now in a song, singers, you know, there are parts of the song that can be quiet and parts of the song that can be very loud when you're really, really projecting. So this is, this is definitely relevant to vocalists as well. So without further ado, how do we know how to set the threshold here? 
what we can do is we can highlight the quiet parts and we can play it and then watch this meter right here. And then let's see where it ends up. I'm going to start off super quiet. Okay, so like the loudest part and the quiet part is negative 18. But let me play that again. Start off super quiet. You know, by and large, we're coming in right about here. So, you know, roughly negative 21 dBs, you know, in between 18 and 24. Let me play that again. Start off super quiet. Right. Okay, so I think it would be safe to say going to start off super quiet that we may want to set the compressor at about going to start off super quiet negative 24 let's do that so that's just an easy way to kind of measure like well how do i measure like what db this is let me just make a duplicate of this track so we can have a side by side and i will just throw the compressor on Negative 15 dB threshold, two to one ratio, makeup gain for after zero dB. By the way, if you're having trouble with sibilance after compression, you can try on checking this box and that works for a lot of people. So hopefully it'll work for you, but let's go ahead and slap that on. Okay, great. So let's see what happens when we change the threshold to negative 24 though. The threshold. Let's throw the threshold down to negative 24 here. Okay. All right. So you can see already, okay, that it has compressed and made louder these quieter parts right here. So for instance, we'll measure again. I'll play this and we'll find it's, it's off max. Super quiet. Okay. So it's maxing out just below. Uh, yeah, just below negative 12. Let's play this and check its max. I'm going to start off super quiet. <laughs> way louder, way more loud. Okay, that's good. So already, just by changing the threshold, we have more congruence. More congruence already, simply because this is in fact more loud in comparison to this. Now we're going to talk about the threshold. Okay, so I'm actually going to undo this and we will create another duplicate track of this. I'll throw that same, those same compressor settings on this one here in the middle. And we had only changed the threshold for this guy. And for this, we're going to, we have the changed threshold and now we're actually going to change the ratio as well. So basically the more dynamic range that we have here i mean and and what i did was create like basically an extreme case um so you know this isn't going to be typical for a lot of people i just wanted to make a very difficult scenario uh for your example so you, that you could see you know how you can use this stuff how you can measure use it to your benefit and change so we had a two to one ratio but we would certainly get much more congruence if we changed the ratio. So let's start off at a four to one and see what that looks like. Voila, already looking nicer, already looking more nice, more congruence already here. We have, look, I will play this max level. Okay, I'm going to play this. So prior to changing the ratio, I'm going to start off super quiet. We were maxing out at about negative six. And now after changing the ratio, I'm going to start off super quiet. Look at that negative three. So you're seeing that we are already getting more congruence in the track. And once again, this is an extreme case. So let's say that we wanted to compress even further. What if we changed the ratio to like something crazy, like eight to one? What would that look like? And what would that sound like? Okay. Look at that. Look at the congruence of these sound waves. Pretty incredible, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to normalize it so that I don't blow you away when we have a quick listen. And we'll normalize that ooh, to negative three. I should probably normalize the entire track. Great. 
So I'm going to hit solo and we're going to have a listen. Now we do want to stay away from setting the ratio way too high because the more that we compress, you know, eight to one, that's, that's pretty solid. That's pretty, pretty tough ratio. The more that we compress, the more it will affect the audio, the more digital you can sound, you know, it definitely can damage your audio if you over compress. So that's why I typically stick with light compression, but extreme cases they call for extreme measures. So let's have a listen to this and see how it sounds. I'm going to start off super quiet and I'm going to duplicate this and make it a stereo track just in case um, this is not coming in on stereo for you all. I'm going to start off super quiet. I'm going to start off super quiet. Now I'm moving up to more of a medium range, medium range right here. And now we're going to get really loud, really, really loud. I mean, that's incredible. And that didn't even really sound bad because, you know, here's, here's the reality. If you have, real, if you have nice equipment and the quality of your audio is really high, you can afford to do some of this stuff without it sounding God awful. So anyway, even with, you know, some of these USB mics, like you can pull stuff like this off if you need to, you know, but basically now you understand how changing the threshold and the ratio can benefit you. Now, one more time, let's listen to this guy. This was just the, you know, regular settings, negative 15 on the threshold, two to one ratio. Let's have a quick listen to this. Actually, that's not fair because I did not normalize this. So now we're going to normalize it. <laughs> All right. Now it's normalized. You're not going to be blown away. I'm going to start off super quiet. I'm going to start off super quiet. Now I'm moving up to more of a medium range. Medium range right here. And now we're going to get really loud. Really, really loud. Now since we normalized to negative three, the highest peak in this audio will be at negative three. But the quietest, the most quiet audio maxed out at going to start off super quiet. I mean, what is that? Negative 14. So that is a very big difference. Negative 14 dBs versus negative three. Now down here, when we changed the threshold and we changed the ratio, now we're maxing out on the quietest part. Let's see here. going to start off super quiet at negative six <laughs> and the loudest is negative three. So that is a three dB difference as opposed to an 11 dB difference. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, it is such a pleasure serving you. Like, subscribe, stick around. I have not forgotten about you. I've got much more, much more valuable content coming. Big shout out to all my students and big shout out to all the people getting EQs for me. I know you guys are super happy. And I, I feel blessed. I feel blessed. Um, you guys have been so, so good to me. So anyway, it is my pleasure to serve you. I will certainly be back with much more valuable content. Until next time, stay safe, stay positive. I got your back.